Hey guys, I am Perry Nemroff and welcome back to another episode of Collider Best of the Week, the place to go if you don't have enough time to watch all the videos that go up on the Collider Videos YouTube channel or to read all the articles on Collider.com and you want to check out some of the best of the best right in one spot. First up on this week's lineup, we've got Movie Talk and we're highlighting a special segment they did there on Thursday's show. They were talking about the best superhero movies that came out between 2014 and 2016. It's a really long discussion and it's got an in-depth process to it, but right now we're gonna highlight the nomination stage of the show and specifically their discussion on whether Doctor Strange is worthy of making the cut. Let's check it out. Doctor Strange, most recently in my mind, I'm telling you why I'm putting it in there, because it is an origin story that we're all familiar with, and it has a third act of a superhero movie we're all kind of familiar with. But it brought things, not just the visuals, but there was a spiritual side to it, and it's an outside left, another one of those marvels, like, we can do anything, we're going to give you an acid psychedelic doctor, and you're going <laughs> to like it. I'm putting it in there. All right, Jeremy, Doctor Strange is up. Uh, yeah, um, I... I I feel like Doctor Strange was an origin story we had seen before, but what it did is in the last part of the last act did something that I so thoroughly enjoyed and hadn't seen yet. I just really liked it. I thought it was fantastic. I had seen it before in a, in a movie or two, but yeah, I, I think it does deserve it. Uh, Cumberbatch brought it, and the last act I thought was great. So, okay, yeah, so you I'm, got I'm, two a, yes yeah, votes. Two yeses for Doctor the, Strange. I really enjoyed Doctor Strange. It was the biggest gamble to me Marvel's taken since Guardians of the Galaxy, but I'm going to go no. Not because it's not a really good movie and really enjoyable and, and all that kind of good stuff. I just see too many other films still outstanding on our list that deserve the spot in front of it. So I'm going to say no to Doctor Strange. Uh, Doctor Strange was so well done and so different uh, for what Marvel's trying to do, yeah. Derrickson. Um, I'm also going to say no because uh, for me, it's there are other movies on here that I don't want to see get left off. And I think Doctor Strange is a youngin. So he can wait. <laughs> okay, well, now, Chris, it comes down to you. We've got two yays, two nays. I'm Does gonna, Doctor Strange make it to the list? I'm going to agree with the last two no's. Not because it's a bad movie. I really enjoyed it. But, again, the same reasoning you guys. I think there's better movies on this list. So now 20th Century Fox did a little release date shuffling, and they added some untitled Fox Marvel movies to their lineup. So right now, the new release dates are November 2nd, 2018, February 14th, 2019. So then you add that to March 2nd, 2018, and June 29, 2018. That's four movies there. What are those movies? The Heroes panel was trying to guess what they might be. I would say Deadpool 2. Right. Uh, is going to be probably the first of those movies out of the gate. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one, seeing as we're seeing animatics already, perhaps New Mutants. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say the X-Men, another X-Men movie with probably, they've announced they're going to do another X-Men movie. Um, and the th fourth would be, I don't know. Gambit? <laughs> you know, I just, a gambit I happen? just don't think that um, I, I don't think they're going to make that Gambit movie. It's a gamble. It is a gamble. <laughs> yeah. But I think that, that you know, I'm, I, I don't know. I mean, we've, you've got New Mutants, you've got X-Men, you've got Deadpool. My guess, uh, I'll just say, I think the very last one, which is 2019, was going to be Deadpool 3. That How would are be they like, going to wow. have time for that? Because, well, if you shoot them back to back, though, like if they shoot those two, yeah. two and three at the same time, you could do it that quickly. I, I feel like February 14th is oh, Valentine's Day. No, no, no. Day. I know what the other, the fourth movie is X Force. X Force. So X -Force. they definitely announced X Force, but they said that they're going to do Deadpool mm. 2, which is going to introduce like Cable and Domino. And then Deadpool 3 is going to have all of X Force in it, but I think they're going to wedge an X Force in between Deadpool two and three what are your thoughts well i feel like the the x-force you'd, you'd want it in the march or the june slot mm -hmm. in terms of like time of year but then i have a lot of questions about this slate because like it makes sense that deadpool would be the first one up but the first of those mm -hmm. dates is like november or something right yeah it's I would october 6th october uh, march it's a and fall then, one and uh november yeah. so i would say the march one for me is more likely for deadpool mm -hmm. i know you don't need to Maybe like falsely be more likely like the next x-men movie or the or, new mutants if it's mm -hmm. ready it'd be a little weird but it's the only one like anywhere close to production right, right? right. we have a director yeah right. <laughs> This week on Jedi Council, the panel was talking about Obi-Wan Kenobi's possible return to the Star Wars film franchise. EW reporter Anthony Bresnikin said that the reason they might not be moving forward with the Obi-Wan solo movie is because possibly Lucasfilm isn't done with the character in the saga films. What did the panel think about that? Let's check out a clip. 
Entertainment Weekly covers a lot of Star Wars stuff. They usually get the exclusive covers. They usually get the exclusive stories. This guy is not going to. We know how it works. Where you're not, you're going to be very careful of what you can say, cannot say. He is going to be very careful what he can and cannot say about things. He doesn't want to blow an opportunity for his company. So I think that this was them saying, go ahead and say that. That's okay. Because episode eight, I, whether it's a force ghost, whether it is mention of the lineage, whatever it might be, Obi-Wan is still going to be a part of the story. Chris, you hear this story. How do you feel about it? Well, I think there's a lot of varying opinions on the Star Wars prequels, if you like them or if you don't like them. But the one common that everyone has is that Ewan McGregor was good as Obi-Wan. So I feel like if he's open to doing more films and fans appreciated his interpretation of Obi-Wan, that they, they're not just going to throw that out and be like, oh, here's a potential franchise. We'll just not do it. There's also so much that they have to hold on to to say, okay, what are the big announcements we're going to do at Celebration? And I think that this is something that, you know, we wanted it to be last year at Celebration right. that they said they were going to do Obi-Wan. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if this is something that they officially announce at Celebration, um, that they're going in that direction because we will have seen Rogue One come out. They'll be further down the road with all the other films. Um, I, I think that it would be fantastic if there's a reference to him in the next one that we see. Uh, I'm hoping that there is a reference in the end of Rogue One, possibly even. This week, Anne Rice took to her Facebook page to announce to fans that she has regained the rights to the Vampire Chronicles, and right now she's working on a show with her son. The two of them are writing an outline together, and eventually they will executive produce the show as well. That is, if it gets picked up when they bring it out to network. So what did the Collider Nightmares panel think of this news? Let's check it out. This is interesting because just a couple of months ago, Josh Boone, who directed The Fault in Our Stars, had Instagrammed a photo of his draft of Interview with the Vampire. Um, and uh, that was less than a year ago. And now she has taken to Twitter and said, nope, I've got the rights back from them and we're gonna do this Game of Thrones style, which is yeah. crazy. Um, so Perry, let's start with you. What are your impressions here? And do you think that this is a great idea? Not necessarily the Vampire Chronicles on television, but Anne Rice and her son haven't necessarily been mm -hmm. showrunners before. Yeah, so there were a couple things that stuck out to me in this piece. First of all, I am very excited about this. I do think this material has so much potential yeah. on TV, but that quote where she said television is where, where the uh, vampires belong, I don't know. That's just a really bold statement. I don't think that's really fair to say. But then comes the point where she says, see a Game of Thrones style faithful rendering of this material. That right there and however many words that is, is exactly what I want. But I think it's cool that the person who originated the material is going to be shepherding whatever this version of the television world is going to be because she created it. Mm -hmm. So I think whatever whoever she ends up working with will probably they'll have those kinds of discussions let's try this or she's feeling this person works better than this other person let's try it out let's figure it out and i think it really needs to be on hbo or mm -hmm. netflix totally it's the, those are the sensibilities behind this thing being a success because after you know my favorite shows now on tv come from hbo and netflix so that's my biased opinion but man do i love this series of books and I do ask, where are these Queen of the Damned fans you, you mentioned? Because that <laughs> movie was exist. awful, <laughs> awful, awful movie. I hated it so much. But you're talking about, that's my favorite book in the series because it is so epic with the vampires and right. the very first vampire ever made in the Queen of the Damned right. and how she, if she lives, the vampires live. I love this mythology. Now it's time for the interview portion of the show when we get to highlight a couple of interviews that we've done on the channel this week. First up, we're going to show you a little clip from Brian Formo's interview with the star of Jackie, Natalie Portman. Let's roll it. What exactly is the makeup of her accent uh, as far as all the different regions are? Well, there's the the New York of her, you know, childhood, the Long Island, that sort of Bouvier side that, you know, the eccentric Grey Gardens kind of family that we're familiar with. Um, you know, that she says things like talk and mm -hmm. haul and things like that. And then um, and then there's this sort of prep school, finishing school aspect where there's almost a mid-Atlantic aspect to it where she'd say like rather, you know, and, and um, that combination, it almost gives like a diagram to her um, and her L's are light, so, you know, like she'll say really, mm -hmm. you know, like the, it's, it's, um, 
it's almost like a faux British thing. So it's, it's got this really unusual mix. Now it's time for my own interview with the writer-director behind Loving, Jeff Nichols. It was one draft and that was the draft, which sounds just, I mean, really unusual and kind of special to me. Well, um, yeah, I don't, I don't discover the story through rewriting. Um, that's never been the case, even on my original uh, stories. I do so much outlining at the beginning. I do so much outlining, um, and that's really where the kind of creative scrapping comes from, where you're like, ah, we don't need those scenes. We just, let's stick with these scenes. I, I use note cards. I have a big piece of cork board up in, in the office uh, that I work in. And before I start typing any part of the script, I have a note card for every single scene and I can just sit back and kind of watch the movie in my head. And so by the time I've gotten to the point of, of, of typing it out, certainly things evolve and change and deepen, but, but the real core of it, I'm not gonna go you know, down a tangent and say, ah, let's scrap those 50 pages and let's go this other direction. And that's kind of always been the case for me. And it certainly was the case here. Over on TV Talk, we've got a Lost in Space update for you. Netflix is doing a 10 episode remake series and they just cast Parker Posey in one of the lead roles. What is it? Let's find out from the TV Talk panel. So this is on Parker Posey yes. playing uh, a traditionally male role. Uh, <laughs> As a female, obviously, it's the female Dr. Smith. I, I personally, I obviously don't care, male, female, whatever. Are you going to watch this series? You know what? The fact that Parker Posey is involved, David's eyes are bugging out. They're lighting up. He's so excited. He's like, Lost in Space. Of course I'm going to watch Lost in Space. Josh, ask me that question because I'll watch Lost in Space. I would not have had any interest in it. But Parker Posey's doing it. I and do dig that, Parker Posey. Oh man, yeah. this is one of those yes queen moments. Mm -hmm. She's amazing. Yep. <laughs> Going back like Dazed and Confused, but even before that, like uh, The House of Blue Leaves. Like there's been so many movies where she's so good. She was an indie queen. She was she was, she was basically uh, Zoe Deschanel before Zoe Deschanel became. Because remember, Zoe Deschanel mm -hmm. started in all those like David Gordon Green movies. Yeah. And then, you know, obviously she's mainstream now, but Parker Posey, yeah, like you said, her, some of her early indie work is incredible. Dude, late nineties uh, or, or yeah. sorry, late eighties, early nineties. She was running it. Yeah. And that makes me very excited to watch this show. David, I think was already sold. Yeah. What can we expect from her playing this character? Well, first I'd like to thank Josh McCuga for writing this excellent script today. We got to start off with two science fiction shows, back <laughs> to back, Star Trek, and then Lost in Space. And then we're gonna um, talk about Westworld eventually. And then Westworld, this is a great show. Uh, what I am curious about Parker Posey is to see how she's gonna play a villain. Because the Dr. Smith is a very interesting, multi-layered character. As I know, the Lost in Space film was not great, but Gary Oldman is a great, is a great actor, and I think that he did he played Dr. Smith well. He had those kind of different layers to him. So I'm going to be curious to see how she does that. I think she can pull it off. I can't wait to see it. Now it's time for the Collider.com portion of the show, when we get to highlight some written features done by the team over there. We're really getting into award season right now, so keep an eye out for Adam Chitwood's continued Oscar Beat series. This latest edition is all about his best director predictions. There's some excellent contenders in the mix right now, but I will be rooting for La La Land director Damien Chazelle. Adam's also got a great list out there, well worth checking out. It's all of Disney's animated movies from the 90s, ranked from worst to best. Where do your favorites fall? Head on over to Collider.com to find out. Sticking with Disney, are you ready to get some songs stuck in your head? Matt Goldberg ranked all of Disney Animation's Oscar-winning songs, and I wouldn't be surprised if next year he had to update this list to include Moana. Here's a great feature from Craig Byrne. The CW's Arrow just hit its 100th episode, so in honor of the occasion, Craig took a look back at the show's best guest stars, including Nissa, Walter Steele, and more. We're going to wrap up this section by throwing a video game piece in the mix. This one comes from Matt Goldberg and is titled Why Final Fantasy XV is a Lesson in Letting Go of Fandom. He shares his personal history with the Final Fantasy series and discusses why he isn't excited for Final Fantasy XV. Now we're moving on over to the Schmodown section of the show. First up on this week's Schmodown lineup is the team matches and I got to make my debut with a certain someone named Jonathan Voitko. Oh yeah, right there. Team Tough Beats versus Double Jeopardy. Let's check out a clip from the match. I know uh, it's been talked to a lot, you know, am I gonna be on a team? Who's my teammate gonna be? Because I didn't want to pick just any old schmuck. I don't know, I needed a brilliant man who has a mind for trivia. And there can only be one Brad Runner. And I am so happy to have him. 
I am so excited and so incredibly nervous to be finally playing a Schmodown match. I was not thrilled about the idea, but you know what makes all the difference? A freaking awesome partner. You guys might not know Jonathan yet, but wait until you see him playing in the Schmodown. They are making their Schmodown debut. Ladies and gentlemen, Scary Harry Nemiroff and Jonathan the Vulture Voidko Team Top Beats. They are making their Schmodown debut. The Inglorious One. Sam Levine and the Brainiac, Red Rudder, Double Jeopardy! Oh, there you go. Are right, they coming in? Make them nice. We're very classing up today. Oh, a lot shit. of class. A lot of class here today, you know. Who directed 2013's The Bling Ring? Oh, um... What's the category? Famous, Famous directors. directors. Famous. Five, four, three. David Fincher. Incorrect. Looking for Sofia Coppola. All right. All right. David Lynch directed what 1986 flick starring Isla, Isabella Rossellini and Dennis Hopper? Uh, Blue Velvet. That's correct. And now for our singles match of the week. It is Sam Levine coming back to face off against Finstock. Very excited to be back in the singles competition. It's felt like an eternity since the last time I was here. I can't wash the taste of baby carrots out of my mouth fast enough, and I'm eager to uh, go head-to-head -head with a, a competitor as talented as Finstock. Listen, I'm playing Sam Levine here today. This guy is a fraud. He won a couple of matches on the old Toad Hop Network, and everybody thought he was a genius. This is Finstock! He also kind of looks like a 1922 child who's begging on the street. With the Inglorious One, Sam Levine! Always with a nice smile on his face. He's always pleasant. He comes out simple and direct. What rocker starred as an alien searching for water to save his planet in The Man Who Fell to Earth? Hmm. What rocker, a 70s rocker? Uh, would that be David Bowie? That's correct. That's wow. correct. Well, who played the lead role of Jack Prescott in the 1976 remake of King Kong? Uh, that would be Jeff Bridges. That is correct. That's correct. Now it's time for Meme of the Week, the portion of the show where we get to highlight a meme or a piece of art that one of you fine viewers have sent in. This week's winner comes from a Twitter submission, and even though he kindly spelled his name out phonetically in his Twitter profile, I am gonna butcher it right now, so get ready for this. This week's winner is your Mugurli, eh, I don't know. He had a little fun with Cody and Cobster's No Shave November final picture, and you know what? I think Cody looks pretty damn good with a Photoshopped beard. Do you want your meme or artwork featured right here on Collider Best of the Week? It is super easy to do. Just pick a moment from one of our shows, make a meme or a piece of art, and then send it on over to mailbag at collider.com, or you can tweet it at us using the hashtag Collider Best of the Week. It's time! Come on! Come on, guys, it's time! Let's go! Who is in here? You guys, you have to stop filming now. Come on, it's time. What? Let's go. Oh Cody, what? Adam, oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. We have to go. <laughs> Hurry up. <gasps> Come on to Studio B. <laughs> here we go. It's the best time of the day, guys. Hey guys. Jonathan, guess what time it is? What time is it? Makuka, come on! Dad, take your headphones off, man. It's time! Oh my god! Oh my god! Are you guys ready? What time is it? It's Bloomer time! Leaning off the show today is John Campia. Sure would be a good day if Harloff would turn his phone off! <laughs> This is the, the first time I've been on the show with all the new fancy gear. Really? Yeah. With the bear so, zoom? First movie talk. <laughs> right. Okay. Huh. 
All right, awesome. Here. <laughs> Making this the very first time a live action Star Wars movie has veered off the main story. Fuck balls and the sips. He's an intelligence officer. He's got a cool jacket. Jacket? He's got a great jacket. The teeth, the drool, the words run. This is exactly what yeah. I use as my Tinder profile picture. <laughs> <laughs> this episode was a little anticlimactic in the sense of how. Well, we should probably throw up a spoiler. Oh, right? spoiler! Nailed it, <clears throat> Nailed it Bakuga! Spoiler. Dick Bas Baxter asks. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Sorry. I don't know what you heard. I heard something different. <laughs> I'm going to fuck this up a hundred times. She's going to be like, yeah, have John's on again. Okay. He makes me laugh. The Time Stone currently calls Kama. I don't know why that's on. It's the sacred amulet, the eye of. Oh, 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 oh. here we go. There's Chirrut Imwe, a blind spiritual water. Water? I haven't had my coffee, Frank. Gotta deal with it. There's Chirrut Imwe, a blind spiritual warrior who can. Oh, I can't get it out. <laughs> Fuck. What a start. You know, it's been a really busy month, but my Fridays have been so lonely. So I'm really happy to. I mean, my Saturdays have been so lonely. <laughs> so I'm really happy to be. That was not even um, intentional. That was a real life mistake. Yes. Kurt Russell's Sons of Anarchy spin-off series Mayans MC scored a pilot order from FX. You said Kurt Russell? Kurt Russell. Kurt hey, Sutter, Russell. Kurt Sutter. Kurt Sutter. Kurt, Kirk, Kurt? Kurt Sutter. Fuck that guy. Sutter home wine that you can buy for $5. Okay, what are my thoughts on Perry walking through my shot? <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> There it is. Oh my god, amazing. There it is. Listen, this show's going fantastic thus far. <laughs> Where's Sinead? Where's Sinead? This is what happens. <laughs> this Bob's happens. away and um, it just all goes to pot. Yep. <laughs> I got high hopes. I've got high hopes. Jax, no! <laughs> oh no! Gemma! Ow, 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 ow. Phenomenal cosmic power. As revealed in the end credits. What? I was on a roll! You were. Fuck you, you penguins. Were. That starts five years ago before the events of A New Hope Rogue One is pressed at parts and K2SO. A reprobate of the fifth. I don't like Kurt Russell. I think he ruined the ladies. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, okay, Kurt that's Russell right. Is oh, Russell the one he drowned. Right. He drowned in that movie. That movie right, whatever movie. <laughs> This is a segment of the show where we try and predict the top five movies this weekend. Uh, Perry, we always will go with you last because you're afraid that we're going to steal <laughs> your ideas. During the dimensional... <laughs> I laughed when I said it. It's it's very hot. I need a paper towel or something. I'm dying. It's freaking hot in there. Skip that one. I'll be right back. What just Good. happened? Are I you, gotta go grab do you have to poop? No. <laughs> what is... <laughs> All right, um, it's always sunny in Philadelphia, season 12, trailer. I'm gonna go ahead and guess that's a Josh thing, because I didn't watch it. Dave, did you? I'm, I don't watch it, it's always sunny This is amazing. Yeah, Josh so just glad leaves that the you show. Laughed. He just leaves the show. Then watch more Crash Course videos. Yeah. Yeah. And I like this one, so that one. good until I totally fucking dropped it. Kind of fucked that up. It was one of those things where I did it perfectly, but didn't think I did it perfectly. So then I kind of questioned myself. It's kind of like every time I hit on Perry, I think I'm doing it right, but I might be doing it wrong. Is she reciprocating? I don't know if she's reciprocating. Life is tough here. Oh, it's only a matter of time before I start sweating through this fucking thing. <laughs> Wouldn't that be horrible? I'm wiping this down. Perry, would you like to help me? <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> Uh, what's what is it with Yoda and seagulls? <laughs> Kenneth, what is the number one film on our list? Star Wars! <laughs> God damn it! I'm out of here. And with that, that's a wrap on this week's edition of Collider Best of the Week. You guys know what I like you to do. Hit the comments section below and share some of your favorite moments from this week's lineup of shows. I'm Perry Nemroff. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram, at P Nemroff. Please go over, bookmarkcollider.com, subscribe to the Collider Videos YouTube channel, watch and read everything, but just in case you don't have enough time, that is what Best of the Week is for. Have a great weekend, everyone.
Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.